debate tonight. The Supreme Court has curbed the Competition Commission of India's powers. It says that a penalty can only be a percentage of relevant market turnover and not the total turnover. Now, this order is likely to impact all cases against the CCI orders in Compat and the Supreme Court itself. Ashmit, who's been tracking that story, joins us now with the details. Ashmit, decode the Supreme Court's order, uh, which tries to limit the powers of penalty of the Competition Commission of India and explain the implications for our viewers. Well, in many respects, if one is to look at the evolution of the jurisprudence as far as competition law is concerned, this by all metrics is in fact a landmark order uh, with respect to competition law. The Apex Court making it very clear, declaring the law of the land to be uh, that under the Compet uh, Competition Act, the interpretation is such that going forward, the, the, uh, the CCR, the Competition Watchdog, will only have powers uh, to levy a penalty only as a percentage of the relevant market turnover and not the total turnover of the company. Now, I'll help explain that with the help of an example, the example of the case which factor uh, in which the apex court had passed the orders essentially a case of uh, cartelization passed against three agrochemical uh, companies and those companies had challenged that before the compact whereby they had claimed that the penalty that has been levied has been levied on the total turnover of the company spread across various geographies whereas the charges of cart cart cartelization are limited to certain geographical areas now that was something that in fact the compact held in their favor and then subsequently we find today that the apex court has agreed with the compact order and has held that only the relevant market turnover can be uh, computed now what's why that's important is that the CCI for the longest time has been computing penalties the penalties that mm. we have seen in the recent past with respect to cement companies auto companies this has been computed as a part of the total turnover and hence with this interpretation of the apex court all those cases stand to get impacted uh, and we're talking about some big ticket matters here if one were to look at uh, the huge uh, case of 6700 crore P penalty slapped on 11 uh, cement companies there's also a case of August of 2014 when we have 2,500 crore rupees penalty slapped on uh, 15 auto 14 auto companies, uh, as well as the CCI penalty that we saw in 2012, uh, the 630 crores as far as DLF is concerned. Mm. All these pending matters that are at various stages of litigation, either before the compact or before the Apex Court, will now bear the brunt of this uh, ruling of the Apex Court. Only the relevant market turnover is to be computed and not the total turnover. Okay, Ashmit, hang in there. Let's get in a quick reaction now. We're joined by Dhanendra Kumar, the former chairman of the Competition Commission of India and law expert Vaibhav Gagar. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. Uh, Mr. Kumar, let me start by asking you, uh, is this a significant setback as far as the Competition Commission of India is concerned, especially when it comes to its powers to levy penalties? I agree and appreciate the uh, orders of the Honorable Supreme Court. Are you able to hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, it looks very logical that the penalty should be imposed only on that turnover, especially in the case of multi-product companies, which were involved in the alleged cartelization and not in the total turnover of the company, because it would be uh, a travesty of uh, justice. So anything which is linked to the impact on the market, which has uh, been responsible, uh, for distortion and by which the company might have derived any undue advantage. So only that turnover should be reckoned in the imposition of penalty. So I think it's very nice that the, uh, that the Honorable Supreme Court has clarified the matter once for all. And uh, uh, this should be the guiding uh, principle. And uh, it should help the CCI. In Let me ask you then, Mr. Danendra Kumar, if you welcome the Supreme Court's order and you believe that the Competition Commission should have actually been uh, levying the penalty as a percentage of the relevant market turnover, not total turnover, as the former CCI chief, sir, why is it that the CCI was doing exactly the opposite? You see, if you look at the language of Section 27, which defines that the penalty can be uh, levied on the 10% of the average turnover of the last preceding financial years, et cetera, et cetera, or in the case of cartelization penalty, up to three times of the profit for each year of the continuation of such agreement uh, or 10% of the turnover, et cetera, et cetera. The turnover has not been defined. Uh, had, it, had it been written relevant turnover or some such thing, it would have made the situation very clear. So in all such matters, okay. The jurisprudence is uh, still in the evolving stage. The decision of the Honorable Supreme Court helps in clarifying uh, the, the interpretation of this particular uh, section of the competition law. And you, and you welcome the Supreme Court's interpretation. I, Let me bring I in Vaibhav Gagar as well. Oh, 
don't have to be welcome to the right. Supreme Court. Yeah. That's the former CCI chief saying he wholeheartedly welcomes the Supreme Court's order. Weber Gagar, uh, let me ask you about what this will now mean as far as pending cases are concerned. You know, in August 2016, the CCI slapped a 6,715 penalty, a uh, crore rupee penalty on 11 cement, uh, cement companies, uh, a 2,550 crore rupee penalty on 14 car companies in August of 2014, uh, 630 crore penalty on DLF. Uh, what happens now as far as these pending cases are concerned? So, um, you know, two things we need to uh, understand. A, I don't think the judgment uh, has been read by anyone yet because it's yet to be uploaded. But from what uh, I understand has happened, the relevant turnover itself is divided into two parts, right? One is with respect to multi-product companies, as it's just been referred to here. So if mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, a cement manufacturer and I am also doing you know, construction activities, then if I have capitalized in the cement sector, then cement is going to be a product by itself. And therefore, I'm not too sure it's going to have much of an impact on the cement cartels uh, per se. Okay. However, it would okay. have an impact uh, where, you know, a company has been uh, penalized for all its ventures together. And, uh, you know, you may have capitalized in only one fraction of it. So then if you look at the car mm -hmm. matter, for instance, the car matter it could still mm -hmm. have a bit of a ramification, perhaps. You know, and again, this is without the benefit okay. of the judgment. Because over there, right. what Compat has in fact done is that it has reduced down the penalty from what the CCI had imposed. Mm -hmm. And it said that it should only be on the market, mm -hmm. which is for service and spare parts, etc., and not on the manufacturing of the cars. And therefore, they have already created okay. that distinction. I'm not too sure, therefore, there is going to be too much of an impact uh, now uh, going forward because the compact has consistently so, actually so, so, held the same view and finally on the DLF matter okay, that so, we're talking about yeah, uh, I yeah. don't think there's going to be an impact at all because again it is on the product of the company which was the real estate uh, residential apartments where the penalty had been imposed so I'm not too sure it's going to make uh, that much of a difference there but there are a lot of other cases where there could be a significant impact where this issue is actually the bone of contention Okay, uh, so Weber, you're saying DLF, you don't believe it's likely to have any significant impact. Of course, we're still awaiting the details of the order. But on yeah. the cement companies in specific, do you think that this could have any impact on the cement companies? I don't think so because uh, the penalty that has been imposed on the cement companies relates to the cartel activities in the cement sector. So I'm not too sure uh, that, that it is going to have much of an impact unless there are, you know, any of those companies would say, listen, I am involved in X, Y, Z, other sectors as well, right? You know, construction and cement. And mm. penalties have been mm. imposed on my construction turnover as well. I believe there may be a, a company or two which are there in that genre. And to them, yes, they could take benefit okay. of this, perhaps, but not all the other companies. A quick final word from you on what you heard from Webhav, uh, Mr. Kumar. We're still awaiting the fine print of the uh, order, but uh, on Webhav's interpretation uh, of, uh, of what the court has said. Well, uh, I too have yet to see the orders of the Honorable Supreme Court, but uh, from whatever one hears, uh, they've, uh, they've clearly defined that uh, these would be the broad contours of the relevant turnover. And therefore, what Webhav has just now mentioned, I would broadly agree, but it would depend on the okay. exact uh, weddings of the Supreme Court order to see what will be the impact sure. on some of these ongoing cases. Uh, Mr. Kumar, Rebhav Gagar, appreciate you joining us here uh, on uh, this important uh, news and order that's come in from the Supreme Court uh, curtailing the powers of the Competition Commission of India when it comes to the levy of penalty on uh, total turnover versus market-relevant turnover. But let's